I suppose for people who make a decision to join an organisation like the Army, you are, I think many of us are driven in part by the, the personal challenge. Many of us are driven, um, you know, by the, the history of those that have gone on operations before. Um, there's always a mystique about testing yourself in those types of conditions, whether you can live up to the the legacy of those that have gone before. I mean, there's all of that. And there's, for me, there's a great sort of sense of adventure about these sorts of things uh, as well. I have to say, uh, almost 40 years down the other end, sometimes you have to be careful what you wish for because uh, sometimes you get far more than you bargained for and uh, Rwanda was certainly a case of that. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think I know people who serve for sometimes 20 years in the, the years between Vietnam and when all the operations started and didn't go anywhere and they still feel very, I think, doleful about that. But, uh, you know, then there's so many of us that have been on, you know, so many operations since. Uh, the When I missed out on going to Somalia, in my mind, I was conveying to my veteran father that my career was over and uh, it had all been wasted and I'd never get another chance. And he said to me, he said, when I was your age... I thought the same thing, and I ended up in a place that I'd never, ever heard of. And I thought for a minute, and I thought, Vietnam? He said, when I was your age, 1967, I had never heard of Vietnam. And so I pondered on that for a second, and I said, oh, that's a ridiculous story. The world's a much smaller place now. There's no places like that anymore. And six months later, I was in Rwanda, and I had never heard of Rwanda before. So.